So here's that's the big question. The big question is what is next? What's next for you? What's your big leap? You know, if you're not clear on what that is, just write something down that feels expansive, where if you were to achieve it, you look back and say, wow, like that was a big leap for me. That was exciting. That was expansive. While you do this, you also want to pay attention to your mind of, am I going to get this right? Are people going to hold me accountable? Are people going to, you know, judge me if I don't achieve this? What are all the stories that are going on as you write down a goal, as you write down your next leap, as you write down whatever that, you know, expansive reality is for you? Pay pay attention to your mind as well. Write down any stories that might be there. So that's going to be important. Some of you write down a goal. Some of you are like, yeah, I want to achieve this. Some people, you know, might be contemplating, might be hesitating, might be with indecision or the, the hesitation because of something there. That's also important to realize. Now, one thing I want to highlight for today, one thing I want to delve deep on is with that new reality, if you were to welcome in that reality, if you were to achieve that thing, if you were to step into that new you, what uncomfortable emotions come up? What uncomfortable emotions come up in that? The reason I ask this is because whenever I'm looking to level up and do something different, achieve it, achieve a more expansive result. Every time I don't do it, I recognize because there's an emotion. My mind doesn't want to feel right. There may be something on the other side of that reality. If I was to manifest it, there may be an emotion that my mind doesn't want to feel. So one way we can write, one way we can highlight this is to write, what's the, what's the biggest fear your mind has about elevating to the next level? Like for me, for example, um, as I elevate my income, I'm starting to learn more and more about investments. I'm starting to learn more and more about, um, you know, managing my money and, the fear of the fear of uh, my mind has is as I as I get more money, I don't know what to do with it. Right? If I don't know what to do with it, it leads to emotions such as indecision or imposter syndrome and all these different things. Um, just overwhelm and and uncertainty is a big one. Like all these emotions that my mind doesn't necessarily want to feel and want to face. And that's my self-sabotage, right? I'm like, oh, I might as well stay making this income, which allows me to do what what I want to do and allows me to um, live in an awesome place and do all these different things. But is it in my expansion to stay there? Probably not, right? We're always being called to elevate and expand. So let's write in the chat What's one emotion that may come if you are to manifest your deepest fear? So if you are to, if so whatever your mind fears most, whether it's failure, whether it's being judged, whether it's succeeding then failing, whether it's looking silly, whether it's making the wrong decision, whether it's going broke, whether it's being homeless, whatever it may be, whatever your mind fears most about your biggest leap, about your next expansive move, what is it that your mind fears you'll feel in that fear? Does that make sense to everyone? If you highlight a fear that your mind fears most, what emotion will you feel if that fear comes about? If that fear is manifested, if that if that fear is uh, actualized, what would you what would you feel in that? What are uncomfortable emotions would come up? If you were to write those uncomfortable emotions in the chat, it might give us a good a good gauge on where people are at. 
get disbelief. Okay, failing, getting really sad, turn to unhealthy ways to cope or avoid sadness. Cool. Fear of overwhelm, not doing a good job. Sense of failure or, or overwhelm, sadness, cool, sad. A lot of sadness. Fear of not being approved by family. Anyone else there? Anyone else have a, a fear of not being approved by other people? Be pretty common. So am I worth it? Will I self-sabotage? Cool. All right, great. Awesome. Now, this is important to highlight because there's nothing wrong with these uncomfortable emotions. We all know that as we evolve and expand, you're, 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 the energy in your body is really doing two things. Christina Lopes taught me this. You're either, you're one, joyfully expanding. You're joyfully expanding as you grow, but you're also releasing baggage. You're doing two things. Your soul's doing two things. Your soul's joyfully expanding as you have more experiences and as you grow and as you learn, as you expand, as you get to experience everything you're here to experience, while you're also releasing baggage. You're also releasing the patterns that are no longer serving you. You're also releasing the things that were keeping you in your small story, that were keeping you in your limited story of, no, I just make this much and I just impact these amount of people and this is how I live my life. I live with this lifestyle. I hang out with these people. Like that can be your small story. And if you're being called to expand beyond that story, there needs to be some things that are going to be released. Correct? We all following? We need to release the things that are keeping us here in the small story. This is exactly what we're highlighting. I believe that as you highlight the, the fear and as you highlight the emotions that you would feel in that and you give yourself the chance to process those emotions, you're actually starting to process and heal what was keeping you in the small story. You're starting to heal the baggage. I don't necessarily like using that word, but that's how it's described to me. You're healing the, the smaller story. You're healing the wounds, the traumas, the patterns that were keeping you in the small story so that you can joyfully expand with less resistance. So question, what do most people do when they have an uncomfortable emotion that they don't want to feel? Do they fully embrace it? Do they fully, do they fully feel it and heal it? Or... Do they avoid? Do they distract themselves? Right? Do they resist it? Do they judge it? Or do they react to it? Reacting meaning I operate, my decisions and actions come from that vibration of that emotion. All those things allow them to be pushed down and push down to the place where they'll just expand unconsciously. That's when you start having addictions. That's when you start having, you know, all these traumas coming through with your emotions. If you ever lashed out at someone or you've done some impulse through anger, through sadness, through rage, through frustration. So we're just pushing down these emotions, correct? Anyone recognize this? So what's really important is to highlight what's your, emo what's your avoidance pattern. Instead of welcoming and feeling this emotion, instead of embracing and, and processing that emotion in your body so you can feel to heal the wounds, traumas, and patterns, what's your avoidance pattern? Do you distract yourself with YouTube? Anyone here fans of YouTube? I only... Tyson Sharp's channel, right? Hopefully. Or do you eat? Or do you exercise? Or do you call a friend? 
or you just scroll on, on Facebook? Like what's your avoidance pattern? What is that avoidance pattern? That's going to be very, very uh, important to highlight. Instead of processing, feeling the emotions, where's your, where's your avoidance pattern? And that can often be unconscious. So just explore that for a minute. If people want to share their, their, their avoidance pattern in the chat, feel free to do so. I see there's drink, eat, drug distance, TV, cool. There's plenty of things that we can do. And there's creative ways the mind comes up with uh, as avoidance patterns. So what many people aren't doing is embracing that, embracing the uncomfortable emotions that would come up if you take your leap. Correct? So that's what we can focus on doing today is actually processing those emotions. Now, anyone who's done any work with me knows this is like the, the main highlight of what we focus on because of what you'll experience on the other side. Uh, but you can, you can walk yourself through this process every day because you're always expanding, you're always growing. There's always going to be other avoidance patterns coming up. But what will, what will matter most is that you're consistently having a, a way to embrace and process and heal what's coming up so that on the other side, you can move forward without, with less resistance. I mean, serving more people, making more money, having the lifestyle you want, feeling healthy, right? Everything, everything that comes along with your, your big leap. So does anyone have any questions before we welcome and embrace these emotions? Anyone have any questions, first of all? We're pretty clear. We we awakening to some awareness so far. Gary, what do you have for us? I find I find what you're saying to be so eloquent. Yet I'm fr frustrated because I'm hearing you say fifteen things when I want to hear one. I'm I'm confused. I don't know exactly. If you could say it simpler, I feel like I, I, you'd reach me better. Okay, cool. There's 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 like. Four main questions we're solving right now. One, what's the biggest leap? Two, what's the fear your mind has most? Three, what's the uncomfortable emotion? Right, what's the uncomfortable emotion that would come with that fear? And then four, what's your avoidance pattern? for not feeling the emotion. Thanks for that question, Gary. I think that helps everyone. They're the four main questions that we're covering at the moment. If we've all written that down, you've kind of got this step ladder to what we're doing next. Uh, Tyson, what's the first one again? What's the, what bites leap? What is it again? What's your biggest, what's your biggest leap? What's the oh? What's the biggest leap? Okay. Yeah. What's your next goal outcome? What What's the expansive result you want next? Okay. Are we supposed to share or, or not? Or, or no, just, it's up to you. It's just... up to you if you want to if you want to uh, write it in the chat. That's up to you. Okay. Um, okay. Not completely necessary. Okay. Any other questions? Are we all up to date? We're all up to date. It's all making sense. We're following along. Okay, beautiful. What we're going to do right now? Oh, Barbara, what do you got for us? Well, I'm I'm hearing you say this is what we're doing, and what I'm noticing in myself is I'm going. You know, what if I don't? And you're saying, what's the biggest fear with me taking that next leap? And I think I have it, but then I'm, I'm getting so busy, which is my way of doing things mm -hmm. so busy and figuring it out and, and understanding what you're saying that I'm, I'm kind of clouding my experience. So thank you. And I'm, I'm in it. Yeah, I'm in, I'm into play. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready to play. 
And I also want to let you know that I have another course I'm leading on the hour. So I'm going to have to jump off. So if I leave early, it's nothing you said. No, that's okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. That's all good. Uh, So if you notice your mind trying to get it perfect, um, or you notice that you feel like I don't have any answers, this is for everyone, um, just do your best guess. Um, The reason being because everything that comes up in this process is meant to come up. You'll you'll notice that when we go into feel, uh, everything that comes up organically is meant to come up. So if you don't feel like you're doing it right, that's what we hold space for. If you feel like you don't know an answer, that's what we hold space for. Right? The reason being, because if you're feeling that way in this process, odds are you're probably feeling that way in your life in some ways. Right? If you're trying to get this process, if you're trying to, if you're clouded in this process, you're probably clouded in other areas of your life. And yeah, you know, that's, that's what we can highlight. And that's what's, going to be healing in the process of all of this any other questions no other questions we're all good awesome let's do this rather than avoid rather than react rather than judge we're going to welcome the emotions in our body now, some of you know the work of, you know, the feel to heal process and, and what that does for you. Uh, I'll explain as we go into it. But what this is going to allow you to do is do the deep work that's going to allow you to take your expansive leap with less resistance, which is a complete gift. I have a question now. Question. Sorry, Tyson, can you hear me? question um, i was told recently that i know that my issue is sadness and i've been avoiding it for the majority of my life and i was encouraged to go find therapy because my my the depth might be too deep that i shouldn't go in there alone mm-hmm. so like are you gonna go in here with me are we about to do something where you gonna take me far enough where you can help put me back up if i go too far or yeah, good question. My lifeguard. You supposed to be my lifeguard because I, if I tap in too far, I tend to spiral and get in this dark pit and it's not very attractive. Okay, I get you. I get you. Good question. Um, what we do in this process is we welcome the emotions that come up organically. As you hold space for it, you're doing the opposite of diving into it. You're just observing it. So what we do is you just, you just hold space and observe whatever you're comfortable with. Does that make sense? Yeah, there's some things that may feel uncomfortable, but the more you hold space, you're just the observer of what's happening in your body. Does that make sense? We don't, we don't go. It makes sense, but I'm just still working on how to do that, how to be the observer versus the recipient. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll guide you into that. Um, Okay. Thank you. But you don't have to go any depths that you're not comfortable with. Well, you don't have to go to any depths okay. that you think, um, you know, will be detrimental. Okay, we, we're okay. we're processing we're processing emotions that are around our big leap, not necessarily um, of huge past traumas and these sort of things, right? Um, so that's what we're focusing on today. Hello, Sunny. Welcome. All right. So, if you'll join me, we're going to breathe deep. Now get comfortable in your chair, wherever you're sitting. All you're going to do right now is focusing on breathing deep and bringing your awareness back to your body. Take a couple of moments to just continue to breathe deep. While you do so, I want you to imagine your fear. I 
I want you to just be playful with it. And just imagine what might happen, what your mind fears most. And whatever emotion may be on the other side, your mind's trying to avoid. I want you to just welcome that emotion into your body. Give yourself permission to feel this uncomfortable emotion. Even if you say to yourself internally, I give myself permission to feel sadness. Even if you talk to the energy in your body and say, I give you permission to feel sadness. You're allowed to feel sadness in my body. You're allowed to feel overwhelmed in my body. You're allowed to feel disappointed. You're allowed to feel judged or anxious or whatever it may feel. And you want to welcome it in fully. Meaning there's going to be some sensations in your body. You're going to be able to notice some physical sensations. That may be felt in your stomach, in your solar plexus, your chest, maybe your throat. I want you to notice how it feels in your body and what the sensations are. And just internally describe the sensation. Does it feel hot? Does it feel heavy? Does it feel empty? Does it feel tight? Is it moving? Is it pulsating? I want you to just internally just describe what that sensation is. As you breathe deep and give yourself just permission to feel that sensation. Now, if you can describe the sensation, that means who and what you are is not the emotion. Who and what you are is more the observer of this emotion, of this sensation that you can hold space for. So we want to welcome this fully. And we want to breathe deep and just give, you, give yourself permission to feel what your mind was avoiding. And while you feel this, while you breathe deep, I'll let you know that's not your job to fix it. It's not your job to move it. It's not your job to heal it. Your job is to just observe, to breathe deep and hold a loving, safe space for it. Knowing that this is a deep pattern, wound, trauma, whatever it may be, that's ready to come up because it's ready to come out. It's organically coming up because it's ready to be seen in you. You're ready to bring light to what was previously dark. You're ready to make conscious what was previously unconscious. The unconscious patterns are now coming to the surface because they're ready to be healed. And you can trust the divine timing in that. And you can also trust the divine timing with it doing what it needs to. You can let yourself off the hook. You don't have to do anything. You just breathe deep and allow yourself to feel what you need to feel while your body operates as a healing furnace. What you also want to highlight to recognize is are there any judgments coming up? So there may be a side of you that feels sad. There may be a side of you that feels anxious or overwhelmed. There may also be a side of you who judges the emotion, who says, I shouldn't feel this way. Why is this coming up again? I thought I healed this already. I 
Just breathe deep and also notice and hold space for any resistance, any judgment you may have about this process, have about the emotion that's coming up, the patterns that you recognize. And just return to holding space, return to sending unconditional love to the sides of you to feel these emotions. If it's helpful, you may want to imagine a younger version of you, an inner five-year-old that feels this emotion sitting on your lap. Energetically, this is what's happening. You're holding space for the side of you who feels this emotion because this side of you has particular stories, whether it's attachments to what wants to happen or whether it's stories around what needs to happen for them to feel safe or them to feel loved or them to feel enough. Just recognize that in a five-year-old who just may be scared. And welcome whatever sensations in your body you feel at this time. And just allow that five-year-old to sit on your lap as you send them unconditional love. You're not here to fix. You're not here to solve their problems. You're not here to make them feel better. You're here to just send them unconditional love no matter how they feel. No matter what they believe. And whenever you feel this emotion, feel these physical sensations in your body without resistance and without judgment, you can trust the energy is just doing whatever it needs to for your healing. The energy will just do whatever it needs to to process in your body to release what's no longer serving you. Your body operates as that healing furnace. You can also drop judgments around how long this will take. Everything will move and heal in perfect timing. Whether it takes five seconds, five minutes, 50 minutes, five days, doesn't matter. If you're holding it without resistance, you'll be willing to hold it for as long as it takes. You can just breathe, be the observer, and knowing that your body is doing exactly what it needs to for you to evolve, for you to expand, because you're no longer avoiding. You're just processing. Now, I want you to ask yourself this question. What else do I need to hold space for? What do I need to hold space for now? Expand your awareness. Is there a side of you who judges? Is there a side of you who has resistance? Is there a side of you who feels another emotion? Just expand your awareness and hold space for that. Hold space for that side of you. Send that side of you unconditional love. Through observing all this, you might have a side of you who feels a deep level of peace. A deep level of contentment. Maybe some joy in the non-attachment. Hold space for that as well. And just observe, just notice what you feel in your body. Continue to breathe deep. Just notice how you feel when you realize that who and what you are 
is not the sadness. It's not anxiety. It's not even the joy. You're just the space that's holding all of it. You can also expand that out and start doing some work around holding space for everything in your external world. And all the feelings internally that comes with that. Let your bank account be the way it is. Let people's behavior be the way it is. Let the governments do what they're doing. Just surrender and feel and breathe deep in your body. So let the energy do what it needs to. You're just getting your mind out of the way. Now, while you do that, bring the energy back to your heart, back to this unconditional love, knowing that the universe is doing exactly what it needs to for you to evolve and expand, for you to heal, for you to grow, for you to become the version of you that you're called to become. What a gift that your internal healing is just on repeat. Organic emotions just come up, give you the opportunity to feel what's ready to be seen within your body. What a gift. What a gift that life gives you experiences that trigger some deep fears, some wounds, some traumas so that you can process, so you can face what was unconscious. So you can process that in your body to become more integrated, to become more light. Welcome in that gratitude. While you do so, I want you to ask yourself this question. From the place of the observer, from the unconditional love that I am, what do I feel called to do next? If I'm not operating from avoiding any sadness, judgment, or avoiding any anxiety, fear, what would I do next? What would be aligned with this version of me who's observing with unconditional love? What is, it, what is it that I can do next? What's my next action step that's aligned with this? If I'm no longer avoiding fear, grief, anxiety, confusion, what's my next action step? What would I do next? What would be that expansive leap? Continue to breathe deep. And when you feel free, Open your eyes. I want you to just write down what some insights were. Throughout that whole process, I want you to just write down some insights. What are some things that you felt? What are some insights you had?
what are some action steps that came to you? Does anyone want to share what that process was like for them? Renee. Um, before the process and you're asking us questions, the more you were in the beginning, I was typing the things that I want to complete by certain dates because I have a, a lot of events, six summits and getting 14 books out by a certain date. And just a lot of uh, tasks and things to, that are on my mind map, as well as my business plan. And everything's with a date. And now that I went through this process, my insights, that was your question, is letting go of the overwhelm and delegating the task of uh, you know hiring a social media team and virtual assistants and things like that. Um, getting my, my book covers done by illustrators. And it's like, oh, okay, this is not so bad. I can do this because I'm sure there's other people who have even more things on their plate than what I have. So I was saying that even though I'm just one person, that I can get it done. And one of the things that I did to avoid getting things done by procrastinating, I would, I would go uh, work out at the gym two hours here, two hours there. And so I said, well, I'm still exercising, but that was just an excuse to uh, to not do what I'm supposed to do. And so instead of overeating or watching TV or something like that, it's like, okay, so I'm, at least I'm exercising that's on my, my, my mind map. So I'm doing it in reverse. It's not a priority. So the, the task to get certain business projects done before November 20th, because in December is a book launch, everything has to be done and prepared. I said, I, I could do this. And um, I feel a sense of relief and a sense of uh, floating. So um, I'm, I'm complete, Tyson. Thank you. Well done. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. We all have some action items. Now, one thing that you might feel is always your expansive leap, you know, your action item and the, the next step is probably gonna, what I describe an, ex, uh, an expansive action step is something that can be scary to your mind mm -hmm. but feels exciting to your heart mm -hmm. now does that make sense to everyone there may be some fear involved it's expansive for a reason it feels expansive like it's expanding your energy the reason being is because you're moving outside your small story right so therefore there's going to be a side of you that fears the unknown so it's going to feel a little bit scary to your mind. However, it will feel expansive to your heart and soul. That's often, not always, but often what your expansive leap will feel like. Does that make sense? If you, have the, if you give your body permission to process and feel, you're no longer avoiding uncomfortable emotion, then that's what may happen. You may get more exciting leaps that are going to give you permission to possibly feel those emotions. But on the other side, you're going to develop a level of courage, resilience, internal resourcefulness that it takes to consistently move forward, right? Consistently expand. You're going to be conditioning and strengthening the sides of you that are more resourceful. Make sense? So what questions do we have here? Feel free to type some things. We'll finish up in five minutes or so because we need to prepare for the collaborative call that's after this. Um, I'm sure many of you will jump on there. I could put the link in the chat if you need. So does any do any questions come up? Anyone want to ask some questions regarding this process? We're all good? I do. I, I have a quick, I don't know if it's quick or not, but I'll just ask okay, you, can I answer it, yeah. later? And then we'll go to Esther. The, um, huh? Yeah, what? go for it. Ask away. Oh, okay. The, um, I, my, my action item um, that 
feels good inside, but my head is like, what? It's to manifest, do this manifest and certain dollar amount challenges that I was given a while back ago to like say aloud in the morning, write it out five minutes in the afternoon and say it aloud again before I go to bed. The number that I want to pick is safe because I've also been hearing Abraham Hicks saying like, if you don't believe it, like if, if you don't believe it, then why are you saying it? it's a waste of time? Like don't, if you don't really believe I can manifest 10 grand, go with that or should I go with what is something I believe if I'm going to put the time into manifesting it? Good question. Um, here would be my, here would be my question. Often what's in your expansive leap is against or something different than what you would normally do. So if you're mm-hmm. always, if you're always trying to manifest something that you can't believe, I would go back to what you, you know, saying what you're always believing that, that can be very powerful to you have to believe and feel in your body what you want to manifest right 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 um mm-hmm. but some people can often use that as a way to just stay safe and that could often mm-hmm. that can sometimes safe. be their pattern right? exactly yeah um, that's where i am that's why yeah. i have a question so i would try something different just experiment experiment with something different right you mean different like not money or different different amount a different amount. Yeah. A different amount. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. It is very important Not with my, with the manifestation techniques and with the um, affirmations, I like to use affirmations that I truly believe, but that also feel mm-hmm. a little bit outside my comfort zone. Right. We want to be mm-hmm. playful there. I believe. Okay. That's what works for me. Okay. To be playful with something you still believe, but you're saying over and over again, so that you feel it in your body. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why in Dyer says feeling the emotions and the feelings of your wishes fulfilled. If you're not doing that, then you're not really, you're not in that, in that empowerment. Right. Mm-hmm. Be playful with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't okay. think there's any right or wrong answer, but be playful with it and, and be playful okay. in a way that is something that's expansive for you. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Tyson. My pleasure. Esther, you had your hand raised. Yeah, I don't really have a question. It was just a really deep experience. I just allowed myself to go in deep and I wanted to say thank you. I, I, I just let my mind float and go where it went. And, and I, I just went to a place of confidence and I can do this and just flew along with what you were directing. And it was it was lovely. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Congrats. Everyone should... Uh... Here's a little, um, I'll go, MJ, are you going to share something? No, I just hit the unmute button by accident. Apologize. (laughs) Sometimes it happens. All right. Here's a, here's a strategy that I learned from, um, from myself. And some of you may have done this with me, but here's a strategy. After you've done this process, you're going to raise your hand like this. You're going to look at the back of your hand. You're going to then turn around, look at the front of your hand. And then give yourself a pat on the back. Because you've just faced some emotions. Some emotions that you were avoiding, some emotions you were previously were uncomfortable. You went in deep and you gave yourself permission to, to go where your mind didn't want to go. That's huge. To me, that's everything. That is absolutely everything. Now, moving forward, this is um, your decision to live this way now and to live from this vibration, not only to take the action steps that are aligned with it, um, but to see how you feel about yourself now. So if you do have an action step, um, make that known. And what I would do is contact someone either from this group or in your personal life and let them know what action step you're going to take. Just let them know. If you guys are curious, this is my action step. This call is my expansive leap, right? And you guys are a part of that. It's something I felt was expansive. So taking the actions is necessary. 
other than that, what I have for you guys is to, uh, if you want to jump on the collaborative call next, you can do that. Um, but keep me posted throughout the week and keep us posted in the serving circle as well, if you like, of what this process was like, of what your next steps will be, um, anything you feel called to share with us that's going to provide some insight or some accountability for you, then definitely do that.